Nanjira, we are thrilled to have you with us today. You're most definitely a true role model and leader for the women in tech uh, community. In 2019, you were named in the list of the BBC 100 women. And in 2016, you were named one of the 100 most influential Africans by the New African Magazine. You're a researcher and analyst, as well as a strategic advocate for digital adoption. And you happen to have a focus on gender implication. You look at the impact of digital adoption on governance, on media, on entrepreneurship and culture. Uh, you write articles and you're also an editor of Innovative Africa. And over the years, you um, have been an advisor to multiple organizations and sat on many boards. Um, currently, you're a commissioner on the Lancet and Financial Times Global Commission on Governing Health Futures 2030. You're a board member of the Digital Impact Alliance, and you also served as a member of the UN Secretary General's um, Panel on Digital Cooperation. Um, and you also led the women's rights online work at the Web Foundation. And today we're also going to talk, since we're part of a, a digital health session, you've recently taken on the role of president and co-chair of Transform Health, which is a uh, coalition focused on achieving health for all in the digital age. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today, uh, among other things. Um, now, seeing, Nanjira, that you've gotten, I would say, more involved um, as of late on the digital health front, per se, can you begin by telling us how you see the role of digital tools in um, equity in global health? If you can give us sort of the general picture of all that first. Thank you, Florence. Um, with digital tools, uh, there's definitely a role they can play um, in achieving equity in global health. However, that is so very much contingent on if they can be effectively and equitably deployed. They can actually be enabling forces that strengthen health systems and help people to attain and maintain good health and well-being. And so by way of example, they, for instance, could generate data that improves the efficiency and effectiveness of core pillars of the health system, such as health information, finances, supplies. They could facilitate targeted health messages to individuals in order to promote public health messages, generate demand for services, and broaden contact coverage. And I think this is particularly important to point with the ongoing pandemic and efforts that um, across the world to get the public uh, in contact with public health authorities. Um, other ways, for instance, could be helping health workers or update their knowledge and skills, deliver more effective care through fast access to clinical protocols, support mechanisms and consultations with other health workers. We see this a lot with uh, telemedicine as a, as a promising venture uh, or even enabling remote communities and people in isolation to seek health advice and diagnosis from health workers. So those are just some of the examples um, in the ways that show the ways we can create equitable health futures using digital tools. Wonderful, wonderful. And you are based in, in Kenya. Um, the digital health, um, I would say, activity in Africa has been stupendous over the years. In fact, um, I've always been one to say that a lot of the innovation that's coming from Africa, um, which is oftentimes frugal innovation, is something that that can be very useful sort of for the industrialized work, you know, world working on. Oftentimes in, in the industrialized world, digital health is more focused on, I would say, um, cutting costs and, and efficiency, right? Whereas the access equation in places where, you know, health infrastructure and and health workers are usually not uh, sufficient, it's it's the access equation, which happens to be the access equation that I've been presented about. Um, but you're seeing a lot of, um, of innovations now kind of cross-fertilizing into, um, into Europe. I think SORMAS was, you know, an example during COVID, a solution that had been developed in Nigeria and Ghana that cross-fertilized into German and um, and Germany and France and Switzerland and some other countries. Um, what's your, you know, how involved, I mean, what's your take on the situation in Africa and digital health? You know, that's a very interesting example of when something is built in a particular community and it's actually contextualized and sustainable and appropriate. And then, you know, you have what would in this typical world be seen as a reverse trans transfer of um, insights and ways of doing. What we must appreciate, and especially as we march forward into this age of digital interdependence, as we called it at the UN panel on digital cooperation, is the idea that the 
winners in terms of the tools and strategies we will use um, the, uh, in health or in any other sector that are digital will only benefit from a very contextualized um, way of deploying and designing them with the communities in mind. So when I think, for instance, about the trajectory in Africa with healthcare, even before we brought in digital tools, one of the biggest pillars of health here is community health workers. So those are basically like a combination of social workers and health practitioners who are really the biggest job is understanding a particular community's ways, their fears, uh, generating that trust that they can use in healthcare. We absolutely need that, even as we deploy and design digital tools uh, in healthcare. With the pandemic, for example, a global lesson is that there's a deficit of trust between citizens and authorities. So community health workers in this context become such a critical bridge because if they go to a community that for whatever reason does not trust their government, but they're, they're involved in the day-to-day -day there, they're able to foster that trust because they're always there. And I think this is applicable whether it's in rural Kenya or rural Germany. And these are the lessons we're learning uh, that we should yeah. trans translate to how we build tools in digital health. Wow, oh, thank you. Thank you for your insight on that. Let's talk a little bit, Nanjiha, now about Transform Health. It's you know fairly new organization. There's sort of a maturing um, happening in, in the global digital health context of, I would say, governance mechanisms or um, organizations that will help indeed with this cross-federalization, this sharing. And the Transform Health is one of the you know coalitions that's been formed. So can you tell us more about Transform Health, what its aims are and its objectives and, and, and whatnot? Sure. Transform Health uh, is a global coalition of a wide range of organizations who are coming together with a common goal of uh, championing the role of digital and data, digital technologies uh, rather, and data in supporting the goal of achieving universal healthcare by 2030. This is something we have as a sustainable development goal. Um, and it's, I think, it, especially having started this decade the way we have, we understand the importance of ensuring that our health systems are resilient. So essentially, with Transform Health, we want to see transformation in the health sector that ensures everyone has access to equitable, affordable, and high-quality health care. We want to see data, again, in digital transformation, harnessed appropriately, I must add, and in respect of human rights and, I would say, human contexts, as we were discussing earlier, to support achieving this goal of uh, universal health care. One of the key important things with Transform Health for us is um, that we want to underscore the agency that young people and women have, and that must, and that must be incorporated in every step of the transformations to come. For us, principles of equity, empowerment, partnerships, uh, and inclusiveness are non-negotiable. So what we're planning to do is to launch a global campaign to accelerate the current trend towards digitalization of health systems to ensure that this digital transformation supports the achievement of universal um, health care by 2030. We're aiming to influence key stakeholders to ensure barriers to the equitable and right-based adoption of digital technology and data to achieve universal healthcare are removed, and to ensure effective policies, clearer regulation, and adequate levels of funding are in place to enable all countries to expand their use of digital technology as is appropriate to achieve universal healthcare. So and lastly, we are ensure, we're aiming for this campaign to call on governments to commit to expanding their understanding of access to digital technologies and data to enable people to gr take greater control of their own health outcomes. Wonderful. So it sounds like you'll be working on more the advocacy angle versus actually sort of implementing projects on the ground, right? Leaving that to mm -hmm. sort of other sort of bodies, or I would say governance um, governance structures. Yes, you mentioned policy, which of course is you know fundamental in digital health. I think. Um, there's still quite a bit of work that needs to be done on that, um, even in the field of telemedicine. I was doing a little global scan earlier mm -hmm. this fall, and it turns out, um, to my surprise, that many, many countries have not put in place the types of policies or, say, reimbursement mechanisms, for example, that are absolutely necessary and in, in a foundation for digital health to be able to develop. So your advocacy role in, in that particular um, sort of angle of influencing governments um, is really essential. So this is really great to hear. Let's, let's talk a little bit now on, you've done a lot of work on 
so the role of women and women equity and in digital and and we're you know in the context of this event on women in tech so i would love to hear you talk about this um what your perspective on this and of course having it also from the angle of digital health would be uh would be wonderful right um you know hopefully we are fast approaching the appreciation at all levels that building a world that does not consider women's perspectives is a world that is doomed to fail. <laughs> um, so in that, in that breath, we absolutely need women in digital health across the board. Um, this could be in labs designing uh, tools and technologies, whether they're technical in the digital sense or in the traditional health sense, like vaccines, you name it. We need them in health centers. We need women in the policymaking and regulatory domains and everything in between and beyond because we also constitute half of the world's population who will be the receiving end, on the receiving end of the health outcomes and healthcare um, tools that are being designed. We therefore can't have any equitable health futures without involvement and again at every stage of half of the world's population. And I want to use an example here about how that can become a serious um, oversight in many uh, settings in the digital um, space. When Apple first released their Apple Watch after, you know, trying to bring personalized health um, into our hands and, and through tools we have in our day to day lives, they had running stats, you name it, but they did not have anything for women to track our sexual and reproductive health which is something for many of us as a primary element. And this is a tool that went through design, you name it, prototyping, and only after it had been launched and there was an outcry, did they realize that this is something that they should have not you know, overlooked. That tells you we need women across the board, whether they're engineers, whether they are social workers, whether they're anthropologists, they also need to be involved in every stage from design, deployment, conceptualization, and whatever becomes the uh, virtuous circle of introducing digital technologies. On the same breath, I want to add that it's not just saying women in tech have to be techies in the sense of being coders or AI experts. We are experts of our own lived experiences based on our um, the, the real theater that is life. And that should absolutely inform how technologies are designed because they're not neutral. And they can, if we do not design them well and accommodate these very rich uh, and diverse perspectives from all over the world, we risk ex exacerbating inequalities and divides, um, which could be gendered, they could be across different domains. Um, and just to add in conclusion, neither are women a homogenous group. Getting Florence and Nigeria in a lab in any domain does not mean all women in the world are represented. So we have to, this is a continuous uh, process. And in my work, one of the things I've done um, over the years is introduce the concept of how we bring gender responsive design and policy making in the tech sector and not assume it as an afterthought or a CSR or, um, you know, one of those things you, you do after the fact, but mainstreaming the idea that this is the reality of the world, taking just a pure gender perspective, which also allows us to accommodate that there are different genders beyond the binary is such important. Uh, work that we must continue to do. So those are just some of the thoughts around how that should translate and should encourage every woman who has a perspective about how, how a tool in tech can be used to step up, speak up, speak out, as we also challenge the systems of how um, resources and, institu uh, and institutions are shaped uh, to bring these tools into our worlds. Wonderful. Great to have your perspective on this. We heard from Anne Ertz as well on this subject, and she was mentioning um, the gap also, because a lot of the community health workers, for example, um, are constituted and are you know women, um, but there's a huge gap in leadership roles, which seems like it would be essential and kind of corroborates to some of the things that you were saying as well um, in global health. Um, so that that was an interesting also um, uh, perspective. So thank you so much again. Um, Nanjaiwe for being part of this. Oh, absolutely thrilled that, that you were, and we wish uh, Transform Health, in particular, since it's a you know um, newly launched um, coalition. Uh, really, the, all the best because its goals are are fantastic. So, thank you again, and uh, appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, Florence. Thank you for having me.